TED Talk 27. In our previous talk messages, we focused on the topics loyalty. We focused on God to increase in us and mercy of God. Where you as an individual and most especially a son of God were asked where your loyalty lies and ponder on these imperative topics. Brethren, for these important and essential blessings to manifest in our lives as genuine Christians serving him in spirit and in truth, we need the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And without pure obedience in our lives, the door will not open for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. This stems in today's message. Welcome to this special platform, Iconic Baby Step. Join me, Tony Odutola, and become a friend of God. All glory be to God. Remember that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. You are blessed. You are a chosen generation. Today's message is a word of encouragement and inspiration titled, Obedience Opens the Door for the Holy Spirit to work in people's life. Brethren, Holy Spirit is intimately connected to obedience. John 4 verse 24, I read from the King James Version, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Obedience refers to following God's commands, teachings, and will. It implies living in accordance with the moral and ethical standards set forth by God. Obedience is seen as an act of submission and surrender to God's authority and guidance. Obedience is necessary for the presence of the Holy Spirit which is based on several biblical passages. For example, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verses 15 to 17, I read the New King James Version. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth. This suggests that obedience to Jesus' commands is a prerequisite for receiving the Holy Spirit, who is referred as an advocate or helper. Brethren, in the biblical book of Acts, obedience is a recurring theme that reflects the early Christian communities commitment to following the teachings of Jesus Christ and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You can see how they work hand in hand. To receive God's blessing fully with a breakthrough, we must, as children of God, be committed and follow our Lord Jesus Christ's teaching, as well as the guidance of the Holy Spirit. However, without obedience in our lives, we cannot receive the special guidance of the Holy Spirit. Obedience to Jesus' teaching. The book of Acts emphasizes the disciples' obedience to the teaching of Jesus Christ. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus instructed the disciples to be witnesses for him in Jerusalem in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1 verse 8. The disciples, including Peter, John, and others, devoted themselves to fulfilling this mission, preaching the gospel and establishing Christian communities. For instance, Peter goes to Cornelius' house and, in a significant act of obedience, enters the home of a Gentile. He realizes 
that God's acceptance extends to all people, regardless of their ethnicity or background. Peter shares the message of Jesus Christ with Cornelius and his household, witnessing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon them. Acts chapter 10 highlights the importance of obedience to God's leading, even when it challenges deeply ingrained beliefs and cultural norms. I would like you not even just to read Acts chapter 10, but the whole book of Acts, you will see the consistency of obedience in that book. Obedience to the Holy Spirit is another fact. Acts highlights the significance of obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit played a crucial role in empowering the apostles and guiding their actions. For example, in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit descended upon the believers on the day of Pentecost, enabling them to speak in different languages and proclaim the good news to a diverse crowd. The apostles consistently sought the Spirit's guidance in their decision-making processes, such as choosing a replacement for Judas Iscariot in Acts chapter 1, verse 12 to 26. That shows that anything we want to do, we must always make sure we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and to give us answers before we embark on anything. Obedience to God's will. Acts emphasizes the importance of obeying God's will and following his direction. The apostles recognized that they were part of a larger plan that God was unfolding and they sought to align their actions with his purposes. They trusted in God's guidance and were willing to step out in faith, even in challenging situations. For instance, Peter and John, despite facing opposition, from religious authorities, boldly proclaimed the name of Jesus and refused to stop preaching. You will find that when we read Acts chapter 4, verses 11 to 20. Obedience to authority. Acts also addresses the idea of obedience to human authorities, such as governing officials or bodies. While the early Christians prioritized their obedience to God. They also demonstrated respect for secular authority when it did not conflict with their commitment to Christ. That is very important. For example, when the apostles were arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin, they acknowledged the authority of the council, but firmly declared their loyalty to God. We find that in Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Overall, obedience is in the book of Acts involves following the teaching of Jesus, being responsive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, aligning with God's will, and acknowledging appropriate human authority. The early Christians viewed obedience as an integral part of their faith and a means to fulfill their mission of spreading the gospel and establishing the church. Brethren, obedience is viewed as a sign of faith and trust in God. By us, as children of God, willingly submitting to God's commands and seeking to live a life in accordance with his will. May we all do the will of God in Jesus' mighty name. Obedience is seen as a means of cooperating with the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works within children of God to transform and sanctify us, helping us to grow in holiness and conformity to Christ. Obedience is a response to God's love and a way to grow in relationship with him, to know him better, to know him more 
but it is not the basis of salvation. Instead, obedience is seen as evidence of a transformed heart and a desire to live in alignment with God's purposes. Obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit produces a transformation in a person's character and behavior. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says it all. New, I read from the New King James Version. I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5 verse 22 also from the New King James Version reads, But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. We know that we can read from verses 16 to 25. In a nutshell, the presence of the Holy Spirit is closely tied to a person's willingness to submit to God's will and live in obedience to his teachings. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, believers receive guidance, strength and spiritual gifts to fulfill God's purposes. We are all created for a purpose and we must make sure we fulfill the will of God. It is seen as a transformative power that guides believers, empowers us to live a holy life and produces spiritual fruits. It is of great importance not to take the presence of the Holy Spirit for granted. Ephesians 4 verse 30, I read from the New King James Version, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Meaning, as sons of God, you must be mindful of your actions and attitudes, ensuring that they do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. It encourages us to live in ways that honor God, avoiding actions that will bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit who indwells and guides us. By living in obedience to God's will and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, by which believers can experience the transformative power of God's grace and grow in relationship with him. It is very important to have a proper and a sound relationship with God. Hallelujah. If you haven't given your life to Christ, why not join me today and become a friend of God by accepting him as your personal savior while you can do so. As I keep saying, hmm, tomorrow might be too late. Please say this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I come to you in full repentance. I accept you as my one and only personal saviour. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness of all my sins, known and unknown. I am sorry for taking you for granted. Write my name in your book of life. Father, I declare that I am nothing without you. I depend on you for everything in my life. I say bye-bye to the devil and carry the cross of righteousness. Please give me the grace to serve you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And let your everlasting peace reign in me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I congratulate you for taking a bold step of faith. For further information, to pray with you, guide you, and support you, you can contact us via the email address placed on the screen. Thank you for joining me today. God bless and see you next time. Bye.